Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. Welcome back to Pre-AP Chemistry. We are on to Unit 2, Periodicity. This is Periodic Trends, and we are in Week 3. And what are we going to look at in Week 3? We're going to be looking at periods, groups, periodic families. We're going to be looking at valence electrons, the atomic radii, how big an atom is, and the ionization energy, the energy to remove an electron. So let's take a look at these periodic trends. First, let's take a look at our periodic table as a whole. Uh, we have these things called periods. Uh, periods are the energy levels. The principal quantum energy levels are the periods. So we, we would call this period one. We know we call that n equals one, n equals two, period two, n equals three is period three. These are the energy levels are the periods. Your groups are going down. These are our columns, our groups. You can see we call that group one, group two, group 13, 14, all the way up to the group 18. These are our columns. And these are kind of positioned by what we call valence electrons, or the outermost electrons. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, let's take a look at our periodic families. Our group one, our group one is called the alkali metals, the alkali metals. Our group one is the alkali metals. They all end in S1 for their electron configuration. You can see group two are the alkaline earth metals. Those end in uh, S2, whether it's 2S2, 3S2, 4S2, they will tend to lose two electrons. You can see in the middle here, we have what's called the transition metals, the transition metals. The transition metals are metals that make a transition from the S orbital to the P orbital. We have the post-transition metals. The post-transition metals, which are all kind of right here, are the post-transition metals after the transition metals. And you can see we have this little staircase called the metalloids. Those are, uh, those are elements that have some properties of metals, some properties of nonmetals. They are kind of stuck in the middle. Metalloids, silicon, germanium, boron, these are the most famous of our metalloids. Then we start coming with the nonmetals. The nonmetals, whereas the metals tend to lose electrons, the nonmetals will tend to gain or share electrons. You can see carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, even hydrogen is really a nonmetal. It should kind of be over here in terms of nonmetals. And you can see we have uh, the what we call the fluorine family or what we would call the halogens. The halogens are group 17. They end in S2P5. They will tend to gain one electron or share electrons. And you can see this group 18 is called the noble gases. Uh, these elements do not tend to react with other elements. Uh, they're called the noble gases. They have fully filled electron configurations. Uh, they are uh, S2P6, S2P6, eight valence electrons, totally filled. And that's where we come with our valence electrons. Our valence electrons are the outermost electrons, the electrons that elements can wheel and deal with, uh, elements that are on the outside of the energy level, the elements that take very little energy to remove. And you can see the alkali metals have one valence electron because they end in S1. The alkaline earth metals have two valence electrons because they end in S2. Elements such as aluminum uh, it will have three valence electrons, carbon will have four valence electrons, Nitrogen will have five, oxygen will have six. The halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they will have seven valence electrons because they end in S2P5. And you can see the noble gases have eight valence electrons. They're fully filled. They end in S2P6. Uh, they have fully filled valence electron shells. So when we get to pure trends, whether we're talking about the atomic radius or we're talking about the ionization energy, uh, two ways we can explain a lot of these trends that we have is the first way, go to nuclear charge. Nuclear charge is the total charge in the nucleus of all the protons. So the nuclear charge, the, what's in the nucleus, the nucleus has protons and neutrons, but the nucleus, the charge of the nucleus is positive. Therefore, it's the number of protons which gives result to the nuclear charge. The other way we want to explain our trends is with principal quantum energy level. That n equals, the n equals 2, and the n equals 3, and the n equals 4. This is the distance from the nucleus to the valence electrons. So you can see as the principal quantum energy level gets greater, the valence electrons get further away from the nucleus. 
Okay, and this is all about attraction and repulsion. Attraction and repulsion, really ultimately about attraction in our period of trends. So let's take a look at the atomic radius trends. Uh, and I'm going to take a look at, I'm going to compare two elements, two atoms, and we're going to take a look at how big these atoms are. And you can see, first I'm going to start with lithium and fluorine. Lithium and fluorine. They're both in the N equals 2 principal quantum energy level. They're valence electrons. Lithium has one valence electron, that is 1s2, 2s1. It has one electron in the valence shell, whereas fluorine has 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. It has seven valence electrons in its, in its uh, outermost shell, whereas lithium has one valence electron. But we want to take a look first at the nuclear charge. Look at lithium's number of protons. Lithium has three positive protons, three positive protons. Whereas fluorine, fluorine has nine, has nine positive protons, which means fluorine has a greater, what we call nuclear charge. Fluorine has a greater nuclear charge. What does that mean if fluorine has a greater nuclear charge is that fluorine's nucleus, it's positively charged nucleus is going to attract these seven valence electrons at a greater extent, and therefore the radius, the atomic radius, will be smaller in comparison to lithium, okay? And so that is because of the nuclear charge. So as we take a look at what we call a horizontal trend, when we're comparing elements on the same principal quantum energy level, we're gonna go to nuclear charge first. Now, let's take a look at two elements where the principal quantum energy level is not the same. You can see uh, lithium, and we're going to compare lithium and potassium. Lithium is at the n equals 2. Potassium's valence electrons are in the n equals 4 principal quantum energy level. What does that mean about potassium's valence electrons? Now, keep in mind, potassium still has one valence electron, doesn't it? It's, in, it's valence electron is in the 4s1. But that one valence electron is very far away from the nucleus, whereas lithium's electron is much closer to the nucleus, isn't it? Therefore, lithium, even though you can see lithium, lithium will, will have a smaller radius, a smaller atomic radius compared to potassium because the valence electron is much closer to the nucleus. It's only in the N equals 2 principal quantum energy level. Now, if you look at the nuclear charge, lithium, you can see, lithium still has three positive protons. Potassium, potassium has 19 positive protons. It's got a much greater nuclear charge. But keep in mind, it has all of these electron shells. It has the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, and then 4s1. You can see that electron is not experiencing all of this attraction to that positive nu nuclear charge because of all the inner rings of electrons, all the inner shells of electrons. And so when you have a vertical trend, when you're taking a look at two elements, comparing them uh, vertically, you want to go to principal quantum energy level, not the nuclear charge. Okay, let's take a look at one last thing. We're going to take a look at what we call the ionization energy. Now, ionization energy is the energy to remove an electron. And I'm going to take a look at the same elements here. Let's take a look at lithium. Lithium, of course, has one valence electron. Okay, one valence electron. It is in the N equals 2, and it's in the 2s1. Fluorine has, just like we said, it has seven valence electrons, still in the N equals 2. 2s2, 2p5, okay? Now, this is a horizontal trend, so where are we going to go? We're going to go to nuclear charge, the nuclear charge. You can see fluorine has nine positive protons, which means fluorine has a greater nuclear charge, a greater nuclear charge. What does that mean about these seven valence electrons if it has a greater nuclear charge? These seven valence electrons will be more attracted to the nucleus more attracted to the nucleus, which means that the ionization energy, the energy to rip one electron away, is much, much greater than lithium. Because this electron is closer to the nucleus, it's more attracted to the nucleus, therefore it takes 1681 kilojoules for every mole to take, 1681 to take just one electron, whereas 
lithium it only takes 520, which means you can probably guess that the alkali metals are going to take the least amount of energy to remove electrons. Something like fluorine is going to take a lot of energy to, to remove electrons. And so that is when we're taking a look at, again, a horizontal trend. Now let's take a look at a, a vertical trend. A vertical trend, we're going to take a look again at lithium and potassium. Potassium's valence electrons are in the n equals 4. It has one valence electron still, and that is in the 4s1. Now keep in mind, what did we say about this one valence electron? The nuclear charge doesn't really matter because what really matters is the principal quantum energy level. This one valence electron is much further away from the nucleus, which means, think about it, if that one electron is much further away from the nucleus than this lithium, you can see this electron is less attracted to the nucleus. It's less attracted to the nucleus, which means it's going to take less energy to remove this one electron. So it has a lower what we call ionization energy. So you can see as, as elements get down further and further down the periodic table, you can see there's less and less ionization energy. Why? Because the valence electrons are further away from the nucleus and therefore they're less attractive. And that is the week three for periodicity unit two. I'll catch you in class guys. See you on the flip side. Bye.